so I just finished second last episode of the season. I've got we got some answers, a lot of questions. Let's get right into it. So the big attack we saw at the end of the episode. I think there's five possible motivations for why did they do this attack because they spent a lot of time, a lot of effort, killed a bunch of different people, smuggled people over, a lot of effort went into planning this attack. So five different reasons it could have been. One was just revenge. They blame the other side, but specifically people working for this agency, they would blame them the most. So it was purely just let's kill a few of them to kind of even out the score and get some revenge. Other theory is that they wanted to get an upper hand in the strategy war. So a bunch of these people, they're very important figures, maybe very good at spy craft or intelligence gathering, whatever. They say, look, we kill all these people and now we'll have the upper hand and we'll be able to, to better maneuver and implement our situation. Third reason, they want to create a war and they want to spark conflict between the sides and hopefully escalate things until both sides are going to war with each other. Four, they want to close the crossing and it's unclear how they could do this. Maybe having a bomb it and set it off in the crossing they think that that's going to close the crossing and they might say look the other side they already almost wiped us out with this flu never again we can never have the other side they're evil we can't trust them it's just too much of a risk to have this crossing open we need to close it before anything further happens or five they want to just have free flow across the crossing and they say look it's unfair that you guys on the other side you have this great world with awesome technology and we're stuck on this side with, with all this fear of the flu and it's not fair. Like we're the, we're fundamentally the same. We, you know, you haven't done anything different than us. It was purely a fluke that we happened to get this flu. So why should you, just by pure luck, being born on that better side, have access to all this stuff that we can't? So the fact that the crossing, it's so heavily regulated, it's unfair. We need to open up the crossing, have free flow of people across, and there should be no distinction, uh, artificial distinction between these two worlds. So with the evidence that we have, I think it's number three. Now, it seemed like they were shooting people, but it seemed like the only reason they were shooting people is they wanted to create all this commotion and make sure that the person going down to try to get to the crossing, everyone was so distracted with either being dead or trying to subdue the people shooting people upstairs that the person had the easiest path. So I don't think they were just trying to shoot as many people as possible, and I don't think they're trying to just wipe out as much of strategy as possible. I think it was all about getting that person down to the crossing. And then we also see that person with a backpack on. So at first I thought, well, maybe it's a bomb and they're going to try to blow it off and and, and kill and uh, blow up the crossing. But I think that in that backpack, because it's important when you see him go into the building and he's pushing the thing and he drops off the guns, he doesn't have the backpack on. That's something he puts on. So I think that within the backpack, there might be some kind of documents. Wouldn't it be cool if within the backpack, they have some kind of proof that the other side started started uh started the plague or was responsible for the plague so they get he gets caught in no man's land suddenly there's this big incident all eyes are on them they're having these negotiations and then he pulls out from that document some kind of proof that maybe there's collusion between the two sides or something so i think that that's most likely where we're going to go from here and what more evidence of that is this episode was called no man's land next episode is called no man's land as well so i think that Whatever happens in next episode, the fact that he's in this no man's land is going to play a big role in it. And I guess the whole scheme could have been, let's shoot all these people, then I'll run into no man's land, and then they're going to be so mad they're going to come get me and kill me, and that's going to cause huge anger on the prime side, and this will start a war. But I don't think it's that. I think there's something special in the backpack that's important to what they have planned. Now, why doesn't Peter's... Um, sorry, not Peter's father-in-law. Why doesn't Claire's dad... We see him, so it's actually his secretary is one of the one of the people that came over and was responsible for this attack he it seems like he intentionally she doesn't shoot him now maybe he was just quick and he snuck behind and she didn't see him but it seems like she sees him decides not to shoot him now this could be just as of right now they don't know that claire is dead for all they know claire is still in this position as the mole they think that her dad being in this powerful position it gives them a lot of leverage and leeway so he's useful for them to be alive so they keep him alive but we also learn that he's not in on it at all. So there was the question, Claire's this mole, is her dad in on it? Pretty clearly he's not because we see him when he finds out that Claire's been in this accident, the reaction he has isn't, oh no, this very important spy is is now out of commission, darn. No, his reaction is, my daughter is, there's a problem with my daughter. Now, I guess you could say he got switched over as well, but I, that that doesn't seem it doesn't seem likely at all, and also the fact that he's so surprised when he sees the gunman. If he was also also an agent, he would know what was going on. So pretty clear that he's who he says he is, and he's on the the normal side. And last thing I'll say, if it was an idea to bomb the crossing and you could actually destroy the crossing, 
what about Howard's and, the, and them getting stuck on the wrong side? That would, well, the way things are going, maybe they wouldn't mind it too much, but it would create an interesting, an interesting problem if God it would be your worst, worst nightmare to kind of temporarily go to go to another reality, and then all of a sudden that the path back is closed forever, and I guess you've got to you got to make do, but you can never really get to where you feel is your home again. And last question I have about the attack. So Aldrich takes Howard Prime to this room, and they're interrogating him a bit. And then they leave and they seem to deliberately lock Howard Prime in this room. And you see Howard obviously irritated and seems like he realizes he's locked in, but then he gets out of the room. So maybe someone else saw something I didn't, but I don't understand how Howard Prime, when the attack's going on, he obviously gets out of the room, seems to grab a key card from a dead body, picks up guns and starts shooting, but how does he get out of that room that he was originally in with Aldrich? Okay, second question. Why does Peter kill or at least try to kill himself and Claire kind of his wife, and how does that relate to the story that Aldrich tells Peter? So I think that Peter tr does, tries to kill himself and his wife in this way as kind of, it's the opposite of Aldrich's story. So Aldrich's story, he is having interactions with his counterpart, and he sends this woman over. It's unclear why he initially sends a woman over to make contact with his counterpart. His counterpart falls in love with this woman and wants to defect with her and come to the other side. Now, this would be great for the side Aldrich's on because if he defects, they can maybe get information from him. He could be very useful. So it would be it would benefit this side immensely to have anybody defect, including Ulrich's counterpart. But Aldrich says, look, if my counterpart defects, that means deep down he's kind of wishy-washy. He's kind of a traitor. So if me and my counterpart, deep down, fundamentally our essence is the same, and all the people above us, all the very powerful people, they see him defect, well, then they're going to look at me and they're going to say, all oh, these same traitorous impulses, they exist in him too. What's to stop? What's to stop them thinking me? I'm going to transfer over. So rather than having him defect and having his side, his team get a win, he says, look, I'm out for myself. I care about myself. So he, in kind of a convoluted way, he kills his person he sent over. So he, he's not going to, he's not going to defect his counterpart. And then his counterpart eventually goes crazy. So anyways, the moral of Aldrich's story seems to be saying, look, you know, we have our sides and we have these teams in, in life, but deep down, you got to look out for number one. You got to look out for yourself. What Peter does is the opposite. He seems to say, look, I, I love my wife. I love my daughter, but for the sake of, of our side, our world, I'm going to kill both of us. So honestly, my daughter and, and all my kids, we're not going, to grow, not going to grow up with a father or a mother. So it's going to be tough for them. But, but I care about, about my side and I care about winning. And then I think why Peter tries to do it with a car accident while he's been drinking rather than just killing her while she's chained to the radiator. One, that way their daughter may never find out that her mom is really a spy or may never find out that her dad killed her mom and we'll just think it's a tragic accident. Whereas if it's done in where he kills her and it's clearly a murder when she's chained to a radiator, the daughter might find out. And then also there's regular police. So it's not like they can just cover it up. There's going to be police. They're going to come to the house and then it may get out and the other side may realize that it, while they're onto them, they know what they're doing about putting these sleeper agents in. So he may think that yeah, the other side, they might see this car accident and have their suspicions that they know what's up now, they know she was the mole, but maybe not. So maybe his last-ditch effort to, I guess, try to do both things. One, protect his daughter and have her never find out the truth. Two, maybe at least help his his side have this a bit advantage with the other side not knowing that they're onto them. And that reminds me, one other big question I had, this was from last episode, and maybe someone in the comments can explain it to me. So when they have the interface room where we see the two Howards across the glass and they're talking to each other, how are they able to do this? Because they're on different sides. So is it because the interface room, it's above the portal and that they're right above the portal and that's how they're able to stand there and look at each other? Because otherwise, how on earth would they see each other unless they're beaming some kind of video feed, but you can't even put a beam a video or anything like that, that ac across the, between the two worlds. So that's one thing I'm, I'm very confused by. And I guess in, if it was right above the portal and this was a portal, then that glass must be um, like break proof and, and you can't get through. And that, that must be just as heavily, um, have a, just as much security as the crossing. Cause that could be like another crossing. So I guess the glass there, not only to prevent um, the people on, on either side from hurting each other, but also to prevent, you know, that being used as a portal. And if, 
the portal is is this high how high does the portal go and i guess is is this whole thing built as a kind of as a kind of barricade because the portal it goes up pretty high up in the air so you could kind of fly a plane over it. lots of questions that we don't really get explained about about actually like how wide the portal is how high it is and then last thing i want to say no really question but just something i thought was very cool imagine being claire the the claire that died the claire that was on the original side and imagine all of a sudden you look up and you see yourself coming towards you and then strangling you and the last thing you see and what imagine what would be going through your mind as suddenly you don't know that there's two worlds you don't know any of this you just see yourself and you're in shock uh, enough shock for already seeing yourself and then yourself starts killing yourself and in some ways it's like what a horrible horrible way to die and what i also i thought was interesting so we have this school this indigo school and they have all these children recruiting and you could say well it's kind of unrealistic like where are they getting all these children but i guess because of the flu there'd be lots of parents that got killed in the flu and therefore lots of children and it wouldn't be maybe too difficult for them to snatch some of these these children whose parents were victims of the flu one they're they're orphans so it's easy to get them and kind of kind of take them under your wing and then also because their parents were killed by the flu <laughs> they'd be in some ways easier to brainwash and indoctrinate to hate the other side because i guess everyone on this other side they hate the flu they're upset about it they have a reason to hate the other side if they think they're behind it but parent kids whose parents were actually killed by the flu they'd be even more susceptible to this brainwashing and one more thing i want to say this storyline of baldwin and her bow we've seen multiple episodes now i forget which episode is introduced but it feels like forever we've been following the storyline of them kind of hanging out falling in love i just hate it and i feel like it's been such a such a drag especially of these last couple episodes which really should be really there's so much to get into and there's so much i want to see explored the fact that we spent so much time on the storyline because i don't feel baldwin is that likable a character i think she was more likable initially but really we've seen her just continue to kill people she's just she's not that likable a character that you're really going to root for so i don't really care if they end up together and also i haven't seen that great chemistry between them i haven't seen any reason why they would be you know perfect for each other falling madly in love so it just seems like a nothing storyline i'm not sure why they chose to to double down on this storyline and have it be such a such a big part of the show i think it was a mistake